as we await the Climate Prediction Center's winter outlook, our local National Weather Service office is hard at work preparing for winter weather forecasting. We are joined by Mike Bardo, a warning coordination meteorologist with the National Weather Service to discuss what changes are ahead for the 2024-2025 winter season. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Caitlin, thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here today. All right. Well, first, can you start off by sharing the National Weather Service winter forecasting process? Sure. Our typical forecast takes us out seven days ahead. And so we're looking at things about a week out. And when we start that process, looking out seven days, we're looking at general patterns. Uh, what is the current pattern in place? What does it look like? How do we expect it to change? In other words, do we see low pressure coming, high pressure coming? Uh, is there a big system on the horizon or a big pattern change or not? And then as the days kind of go by, we work to refine that. So are we seeing maybe a snowstorm that's brewing and uh, coming out of the Rockies in a few days or something like that? And then we gauge our confidence. How, you know, how do we expect this to maybe change in the next few days? Is the track going to change? Is the track going to come near us? What are the temperature profiles going to look like? Is the precipitation going to be winter precipitation? Or is it just going to be rain? Is it going to be a warmer or cold system? And as we really get into the next uh, two to three days, typically the details really come into view in terms of what areas are going to be most affected how much precipitation is going to fall, what the temperatures are going to look like, and really one of the worst conditions going to be. And we're going to start really hitting that message about what people, people can do to be prepared and what they can expect at that point. So it's really all about kind of seeing the bigger picture as we're further out and then refining down to the nitty gritty, even hourly details as we get to the, the day before the day of the event. Right. Okay. So what are the winter weather strategies that will be put into play this year? Kind of our typical strategy is, is we start with the winter outlook. So the Climate Prediction Center will be uh, putting out the latest version of the winter outlook here in a couple of weeks or pretty soon. Uh, we're already looking at that information for winter. What are we expecting? What does the pattern look like? And then we do some winter training. We do a lot of internal training for our staff, go through scenarios, make sure we're ready to get out of summer mode and into winter mode. Uh, and then we just keep an eye on the forecast and as we see things come through, uh, we're looking at what kind of messaging do we need? What graphics do we need to put out? Uh, are we talking about a winter snow, uh, excuse me, a snow event or an icy event? or maybe it's gonna be mild and rainy with wind. Uh, so we're trying to stay ahead of the curve, let people know what to expect and also inform them how they can best be prepared uh, and when they need to be concerned about the weather the most. Okay, so this is going to rattle all of us meteorologists, but what are we going to use to replace wind chill advisories, watches and warnings moving forward? So one of the changes that the weather service is making for this winter is a transition from what we've always known as uh, wind chill advisories and wind chill warnings to cold weather advisories and extreme cold watches and warnings. So extreme cold products, as we call them, have been used in other parts of the country. And now in a mode to kind of simplify our product suite and, and simplify the message, keep it more straightforward, we're merging those with the windshield products. So really the, the main change is the name change. We also have a little bit more flexibility as forecasters uh, to assess situations that are just bitterly cold, but not necessarily bitterly cold because the wind is blowing. We do get days when we're you know, 25 below in the morning without any wind, aside, along with days when the wind chills blowing and the winds are blowing, the wind chills are maybe 25 or 30 or 40 below even. So now it gives us more flexibility. Essentially cold is cold. If you walk outside the door, uh, you can expect it to be dangerously cold. You need to be aware of frostbite. You need to be aware of precautions. So cold weather better sums that up. They found through so, uh, social science research uh, and public feedback. So that's what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. The criteria is pretty much the same. Uh, we get to about minus 20 for an apparent temperature. So that could take into account whether the wind is blowing or not, or the actual temperature. Uh, we're going to be thinking about cold weather advisories. As okay. we get to an apparent temperature uh, of about minus 30, we're going to start thinking about extreme cold watches and warnings. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so can you give us a peek into the Chicago National Weather Service winter outlook by chance? Sure. So what we're looking at for winter, uh, the large scale pattern that's going to be in play is what we call La Nina. I'm sure many viewers are familiar with that, but we have to look at the waters along in the Pacific Ocean, along the equator, so a long way away from here. But that's one of the main drivers kind of for the overall weather pattern that we can expect to see in the season. So we had three back to back La Nina winters uh, recently, not this past winter, that was El Nino, which is kind of the opposite. Uh, the three previous were La Nina, the waters in the Pacific along the equator are cooler than typical. That typically brings us what we call an active pattern. So lots of opportunities for, for precipitation. Uh, historically speaking, especially over the last 30 years or 40 years even, uh, that means typically normal or above normal precipitation. Pretty good confidence that it's going to be an active season when La Nina is expected. 
The challenge though, and kind of the problem we have is this, the signal, as we say, for what the temperatures are gonna look like is gonna be warm or cold or relatively warm or relatively cold. Uh, it's really kind of even 50-50 for La Nina, win La Nina winter. You've had five in the, since 1996 that were colder, six that were warmer, warmer and three that were near normal. So is that precipitation gonna be a snowy winter or is it gonna be a wet, rainy winter or somewhere in between? So that's gonna be the big challenge. So okay. the bottom line, I think, is we're looking for a, a more active period over the winter, uh, and we're going to have to really determine if, if things are going to be colder than normal, warmer than normal on a kind of a, a week or week to two week basis. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike Bardot, for joining us. Thank you.